Alright, hello everyone, it's GSTAR321 here again, and today, as you can see, I'm playing a game called Cry of Fear for the PC. This game is... It leaves me speechless. This is one of the most amazing horror games I have ever played in my entire life. This game comes close to rivaling Silent Hill 2. That's how good it is. I cannot praise this game enough. I cannot speak highly of this game enough. My words alone will not do it justice. It simply must be shown. You know, to me, this is more than just a game. This is art. This is life. Now, a bit of backstory on the game. It came out back in 2012 as a Half-Life mod. Yes, that's right. This game is a Half-Life mod, meaning it's free. <laughs> that's unbelievable, you know, because this is better than most horror games I've played to date. And it's free. That's insane. And a year later, in 2013, a free standalone version of the game was released, meaning you don't need Half-Life to play it. So that's the version of the game I'm playing here today. Now the game was developed by a team called Team Psych Scalar. They were also responsible for developing a game called Afraid of Monsters DC. I have not played that game yet, but if it's anywhere near as good as this one, man, I cannot wait to play it. So keep an eye out for that game as well. So before I get started, I'm just going to go into unlockables here and quickly talk about something very important. As you can see, I've unlocked everything. Most of the unlockables consist of different costumes for your character and special weapons. I will go into detail as to how to unlock all these special items, but I'm going to make that a separate video because there's just too much to talk about. But there is one very critical thing I need to mention. If you click on this, as you can see, it's a book. It contains five pages in total. When you finish the game for the first time, you'll unlock page one here. But for pages two, three, four, and five, you have to find them scattered throughout the game. With pages two and three, if you don't find them on your first playthrough, they will not appear on subsequent playthroughs. They disappear, which is bullshit. So you have to get them on your first playthrough. I'll go into detail in regards to what these pages talk about at a later time, but for now, just take note of that. And don't worry, I'll show you the locations of all the pages throughout the game, and I will talk about all these unlockables in a separate video. So, what is this game about? Well, it's a psychological horror game. You play as a young guy called Simon. He's got depression and anxiety. He's messed up. It's just such a good game, you know. I could sit here all day talking about how good it is, how amazing it is, but it has a very dark feel to it, a very morbid feel. It's extremely melancholic, it's extremely depressing and terrifying at the same time. Quite simply put, this game is an absolute masterpiece. So enough talk, let's get straight into it. We'll go new game. As you can see, you can select your difficulty. Nightmare will only be available to you once you complete the game for the first time then you will be able to play Nightmare Mode. But I believe for Difficult and Nightmare Mode, you really need the special weapons. You know, you need to unlock the special items to help you get through it. I don't think it's possible. Well, for Nightmare at least I know. It is not possible to get through it without using special items, special weapons. So if it's your first playthrough, go ahead and select Medium Difficulty. That's what I'll be playing it on here for these walkthrough videos. And without further ado, let's start this game up, Cry of Fear for the PC. Or 
as long as I can remember. I don't know if I like it or if I'm just used to it. But I do know this. Being lonely does things to you. Feeling shit and bitter and angry all the time just eats away at you. All right, so here we go. Where are we? Who knows? We're inside this room, and all we've got at this stage is a camera. And the door opens, look, leading into nothingness. Just a dark, black void. Look at that, a Half-Life poster on the wall. Extremely fitting. So let's do it. What you need to do here is shoot, so to speak, the X symbols with the camera. I hate you. Door opens. This is a great opener to the game. Look at that, a dead body. What the fuck? Let's 
go down here. Did you see that? There was just like a hanged body there. Jump through the window. Keep going through the doors. Is that you? <laughs> I can't take this anymore. On the wall there. What was that? Shoot the X, go through the door. <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned you guys about that, but yeah, that's what happens. Okay, so here we go. Chapter 1, Lost in a City. Now, you saw in the intro there, Simon got hit by a car, and he blacked out. We went through that camera phase. Now, don't be fooled by that jump scare that we just saw. The game doesn't rely on jump scares, trust me. This is a deep, deep game. Very much like the Silent Hill games. It fucks with your emotions completely. It's just powerful. Okay, press tab to access your inventory. Like so. From here you can use, drop, equip or combine items. Some items can be combined with weapons and vice versa. Mouse over slots for hints. Yep, so it's just sort of giving you a brief introduction to the game. Almost like a tutorial here to start with. Huh? What was that? Did you see that guy there? Hold shift to sprint. The blue bar on the HUD is your... I think it said stamina. Sprinting will deplete your stamina bar quickly, so use it sparingly. Your stamina will slowly recover while not sprinting or jumping. Crouching recovers faster. So hold left shift to sprint. As you can see, the bar in the bottom left, the blue bar, depletes rapidly when you sprint. Now this door here, if you go inside, this is the secret room. This will contain all the unlockables that you have unlocked. To get access to this room, you need to finish the game at least once first. So on your first playthrough, you won't be able to come in here. And like I said at the start, I'll talk about all the unlockables in a separate video because there is quite a bit to talk about. Here you can change his outfit if you've unlocked those specific outfits. I'll just leave it. I'll keep the game real and authentic for this walkthrough, the way it was meant to be played. And there's a door here, find a code to the padlock. As you can see, we need to input a code. We do not have it yet, so we will progress. Press B to view your current objective. Find a code to the padlock, yep, let's do it. Now we'll go down the stairs. Did you? <laughs> yep. Love it. Your mobile phone can be used as a source of light for navigating dark areas. Press mouse 1 to activate your light. The mobile light does not require batteries. That's good. If you holster your mobile with the light on, a dim light will still shine through your bag. Okay, so let's press tab to bring up our inventory. As you can see, all we have at this stage is a switchblade and a mobile phone. The switchblade, easy to handle but rather weak with an ineffective range. Now you can quick slot three items. So to do that, you just press on an item and then go one if you want to 
assign it to slot 1 and we'll do the same with the mobile phone. Actually let's have a read of it first. Simon's mobile phone. Phone screen can be accessed by pressing the use option. Okay so let's hotkey that to number 2. So if I press 2 on my keyboard, bang, the phone comes up and we got a message. Cool. Where are you? Come home as soon as possible. It's getting dark from our mum. So I guess that's what we have to do. So if I press 1 now, the knife comes back up. Now, an absolute critical thing that you need to know is for certain items, you can dual wield them. So if I press 1 and 2 together now, see, you get both the knife and the phone. And let's turn on the phone's light so we can see because this game is relatively dark. Bell ring there. So what we need to do here is go over to this white van and there'll be a note, cloudy day, archived, cloudy day. And go over here, there'll be another note, Excelsior, archived Excelsior. Now don't worry if you forget those notes because if you press tab to open up your inventory, you can see there's a notes section here. See, hidden note one and hidden note two. Awesome. So we don't have much inventory space as you can see. In our bag we have three slots so we can hold three items. You can never ever drop the phone. You can't do it. You can drop the knife if you want but we don't have any other weapons at this stage so don't do that. And you can hold three items in your pockets. So you can hold a maximum of six items which really isn't a lot but once you play through the game a fair bit you'll become familiar with it what you should and shouldn't carry so we'll go in here now and there'll be a computer terminal and we need to input both cloudy day and excelsior so I'm gonna try excelsior as the username and cloudy day as the password Yep, beautiful. And there's the code to that door. Remember the door with the padlock? We put in that code, 1966, and we'll be able to get it open. <laughs> uh, did you see that? Uh, the game's already starting to fuck with you. And you know it. So we'll make our way back to that padlocked door and put in the code to go through. Now, when you're using the knife, if you press the mouse 2 button, you'll get it ready for a different attack. I much prefer this attack. It's like a stab as opposed to just the slashes. If you're dual wielding, then he'll always do the stab attack, which is good. Just make sure you dual wield. It's so much better. Because you can have the phone out at the same time to light the dark areas that you need to navigate through. Okay, so there's the door. Look at that. Help me. Blood trail. What the fuck? Oh shit, what was the code? I forgot. 1966. Okay, let's put it in. 1966. There we go. And we can go through. You can put up to three items in your quick slots. Yep, I spoke about that before. If you press 1, you will equip the weapon in your first quick slot. Yep. This is faster than equipping through the inventory and can save your life. That is very accurate and important because if you press tab to open your inventory, it doesn't pause the game. So if you've got an enemy in front of you that's about to attack and you press tab, it won't pause the game. You know, the enemy will attack you. So if you go, oh fuck, I need, oh, I need to get the knife out, oh, quick, bang, you're dead, you know what I mean? Whereas if you've just got it quick slotted, so to speak, you can just press the number, number one, and you'll get the knife ready to attack. Absolutely critical. Doors locked. Oh yeah, look at this. Can you see something there? Can you see there's a person staring at you through that door crack? 
Let's go over and see. Ooh. What the? <laughs> oh man, I love this game. <laughs> First time I played it, my goodness, that scared the shit out of me. Look to the right. Oh, okay, let's do it. You can save your game at any location with a tape recorder. You are allowed to save up to five individual saves for multiple playthroughs. Saving requires a tape in Nightmare Mode. The tape can only be used five times. Because we're playing it on normal, then we don't need a tape, which is good. Huh? What's this doing here? Looks like an old tape recorder. I should be able to record my thoughts and experiences here. So, save the game if you want. I'm not going to bother saving it yet. Let's continue on. Press mouse 2 to perform a melee attack with your weapon. This will cause a small amount of damage to monsters in your immediate vicinity. Use it to push attack enemies when surrounded or out of ammo. So I'm just going to be playing like this predominantly, dual wielding with my knife and phone. And here we go. Is that blood on the floor? Christ, it looks like it. What's going on? How the fuck did I even get here? Oh no. <laughs> so this is our first enemy encounter. Let's take care of him. Just stab him with the knife. Now the game hasn't told us this yet, but if you press left, right, up or down, twice in a row, you'll do a dodge attack. So what I'm doing is hitting him, then dodging. Shit. And listen to this music. This is terrifying. Blood on the ground. What the hell? Yes, yeah, so as I was saying when I was fighting that guy, you can press down, left, right, or up twice in a row to dodge in that direction. It's absolutely essential. You know, you're using the WASD keys to play. If you tap any one of those keys quickly in rapid succession, so I'm going to press S twice in a row, back. See how he dodges back? If you press forward or W twice in a row, he dodges forward and same for the D key to dodge right and A. I'll press that twice in a row. See? This is absolutely critical in terms of combat for this game. You need to master it. Basically, if you've got a melee weapon, what you're going to be doing is hitting an enemy with it, then immediately dodging backwards, like so. Attack, dodge back. Attack, dodge back. That's basically how you're going to be playing this game. Press E to climb ladders. Once on the ladder, use directional keys to climb slash descend. And we've got another item here, syringe. Morphine syringe. A syringe containing one dose of morphine restores health, but too much can be dangerous. Let's hotkey that to number three. The syringes are basically like the healing items in this game. So, I'll use that when I'm quite low on health. Now one other thing, when using the dodge or evade move, you'll notice it depletes your stamina bar quite rapidly. So don't go too crazy with it because you'll find you'll be out of stamina very quickly. Ooh, there's an enemy there. So here we go, let's put it into practice. Fuck, he got me, bastard. Fuck! See, I ran out of stamina and I wasn't able to dodge that attack there, that's why he got me. 
Crouching recovers stamina faster, like it said at the beginning, so I tend to do that when I'm low. Okay, let's try it again here. These enemies are called slowers. They're pretty freaky looking. They're usually equipped with a hammer or some other melee weapon. And if you want, you can save your game at the tape recorder there. Double tap directional keys or hold alt to dodge in a specific direction. Yep, I've just spoken about that. This is extremely useful for avoiding attacks and can save your life. Dodging requires stamina, so use it wisely. So if you want, you don't need to press the directional keys twice in a row to dodge. For example, here I'm pressing S twice in a row to dodge back. Instead of doing that though, you can hold ALT and just tap S once and he will dodge. But I find that to be quite awkward because sometimes you'll hit the key next to it and it will minimize the game. It's very frustrating so I like just tapping the directional keys twice in a row to dodge. Another enemy here. When you come across these slowers, you can usually get two or three hits out on them initially without dodging. So I'll show you what I mean on the next one. One, two, three. See? And now I'm going to start dodging because when you do that first hit on them, they sort of get staggered back a bit, which is good. Okay, we can't go that way just yet. We need to go down here. <laughs> just pops out. Get fucked. All right, I'm going to wait for him to come up. Fuck, what the hell is going on? This is terrible. That was pretty sloppy of me there, taking care of that slower. But we'll go down here, hit the switch, run back, and we'll take a right. By hitting that switch, all it does is open a gate in this hallway. So we can go through now. And we're outside. We just got a text message. Help me. Please help. They are coming. I'm inside the apartments. Hurry. And we don't know who that text message is from. As you can see, it's like a random number. Bit of climbing to do. And there's a ladder. Let's go up. And we'll jump over here and go inside this door. This will take us into the apartments. This place doesn't feel right. Okay, so here we are. Can't call the elevator. It must be stuck somewhere. The hallway is totally blocked. I can't get past. And that's where we came in. I need to go to the fourth floor. <laughs> fourth floor, help the person on the fourth floor. So what floor are we on? Three, okay. Let's read this note. Three little kitties playing in the park. Said the first kitty, let's go home before it gets dark. The first two went on their merry way home. The third stayed playing all alone. Come here little child, come to me. The bushes whispered softly. They say curiosity killed the cat. That's fucking creepy. That is... Fucked. Okay, so... We can't go here. Oh, we can go in here. Let's go inside this door. Alright, nothing inside this apartment. Not even an item. That's disappointing. Usually there's like a health syringe or something lying around. We'll go inside this apartment. And there's a tape recorder there if you want to save the game. Oh shit, here we go. Yep, enemy. Look at that thing. 
It's like a little child. Fuck. Be careful. They're very fast. Jesus Christ, that took me off guard. I forgot about that thing there. You know, I've played the game through <laughs> so many times, like maybe 10 plus times, and still, it can still fuck you up. Okay, so all these doors along here are locked. I mean, we need to go to the fourth floor, but we can't go in through that way. But if you go to the top, as you can see, there's a syringe. Awesome. Now we need to go down to level two. So let's go inside. Okay, we're on level two now. Can't call the elevator. Oh shit. Another kid enemy. Let's take care of him. Yeah, their slash attack is quite fast, so be very quick at dodging away from them after you've attacked. That's locked. Locked. Locked, and that will be locked. Now the thing is, I've got to mention this, it's quite similar in regards to Silent Hill games. As you can see, the door won't budge. If you get that message when you try and open a door, okay, that's different. But if you get this message, it won't budge. That means you can never go inside. If you get a different message, like, seems it's locked from the other side, you can usually go inside those doors at a later stage. And same with these ones, if it just says it's locked, then that means you will be able to go through them at a later stage. But for now, we don't have access. See? The door won't budge, door won't budge. That means we cannot go inside. And we just heard a window shutter. We'll go in that room and investigate in a minute. But first, let's have a look at this note. My secret note number two. Those little kitties are so cute. They look so lovely, I just want to touch them. But then those parents come, that's why I have to kill them. Sounds like a pedophile, doesn't it? Fucking creep. Syringe there, and the apartment key. A generic key for an apartment, there is a note next to it, neighbour across. Now look at this, we can't go back out. What? Someone locked it. And look at this, look at the walls. Look at the pictures. It's probably the pedophile's room. Dead bodies and shit. Oh no. You just heard a window shatter. Footsteps. Doors unlocked. Let's go. And be careful. Yep, these are oh, fuck. Those enemies. They're a pain in the ass. Their head explodes upon impact when they get close to you, and it does do quite a bit of damage. So be very careful. Always take care of them using only firearms. I mean, at this stage, we don't have a firearm, and I would have had to hit him with the knife twice, I believe, to kill him. They do take a bit with melee weapons. And it's quite risky because, I mean, once they get close to you, like I said, their head explodes. So when you get close to do a melee attack, normally they'll just explode anyway, but you can kill them with melee attacks. Oh shit, I haven't been reading the top there. Remember to check the item for clues. Yep, okay, so all it's talking about is this, I guess. Apartment key. Basically, we need to go in this door here, and as you can see, it's locked. So go ahead and bring up your inventory and use the key, and we can now go through. Okay, what do we got here? Yep, I knew there was a kid in that bathroom. Quickly take care of him. Fuck. There's never anything in the bathrooms to collect item-wise. All locked. Let's go through here. This guy's a bit tricky because... Look at this. It's so hard to dodge. He's in a very awkward position. See, when I dodge back, I just hit that cupboard. So you've got to, like, dodge back and fucking... I really need to heal. This is pathetic. So just left-click to use a morphine syringe, and there you go. Back on full health. Let me dual wield the phone and the knife. That enemy, I swear to god, that's terrible. He comes out from under the bed, 
and you've got no room to move, that's bullshit positioning of an enemy. Unacceptable. There'll be a kid enemy in here. There he is. Back up. <sighs> Told you you gotta be quick. When fighting those kids, they can slash you relatively fast. Syringe there. I just heard a noise. And basically, that was the wall opening up. And look at this there's an ammo clip. Picked up the Glock magazine with 15 rounds, and it just said there's something in the roof. Look at that, we get a gun now. Go ahead and press the use key, E on it. Is that a body? Christ, it smells bad. He's holding a gun. Better take it with me. And that's a key there as well. You got the hall key. So here we go, we've got a Glock. Press mouse 3 to toggle iron sights. Iron sights allow you to aim precisely at the expense of limited movement. So the Glock is a great weapon. Try to use ammo sparingly. I'm just going to use the knife for a little bit because I'm quite comfortable with it and I know it's up ahead. So we also picked up a hall key. It looks like a kind of key for hall doors. So we need to go straight ahead here and use it on this door and we can go through. Oh, actually, I need to equip the Glock because there will be two enemies. As soon as you go through this door, there will be two enemies. Those little creatures that explode on impact. So I'm going to quickly shoot them before they get close to me. Oh, that is just dirty. I failed. Now, natural instinct will tell you to reload the Glock. Do not reload because, as you can see, I've got however many bullets there are left in the clip, about half the clip, and another full clip. If you reload, you will lose this half clip you currently have. So it's quite weird here in Cry of Fear how that works. Don't reload until you've got like one or two bullets left, or if you can, use all of them. But, I mean, if you're going into a room that you're not familiar with and you don't know if there's going to be enemies there or not, then of course in that situation reload. But just try and hold off reloading for as long as you possibly can. Otherwise, any bullets remaining in the clip will be wasted. Okay, so let's go to the top first. I'll just quickly show you something. So this is level 3. Look at this. You can hear a baby crying. It's all chained up. I wonder what happened here. And another note, my secret note number three. Now, as I need to kill some kitties, I stuck the elevator in the hall, so only the personnel can access it by a secret code. I guess no kitty will find that out, so they will just have to take the stairs. Asshole. So we've got to use the stairs for now. And I just unlocked that door, so I can go back to level three that way. Another kid enemy here, quickly take care of him. Okay, good, did good there. Glock magazine. Okay, all these doors are locked. But this is the elevator. There's a keypad next to the elevator. As you can see, we don't know the code, so that is what we need to do now. But primarily, we need to help the person on the fourth floor. So let's go down. That's where we came out of. Let's go down even further to level 1. And there should be an ammo clip here. Yep, beautiful. Oh shit! Kid just spawned. Forgot about that. Oh, come on. They're so quick, the kids, at slashing. It's ridiculous. So we're on level 1 now. We need to go through here. It's locked. Let's go in here. Tape recorder there to save your game. Syringe on the counter, beautiful. <laughs> Enemy there. Oh shit. Normally he stays in that room. Looks like he's following me now. Bastard. Okay, got him. Ammo clip. Radio with a bit of static. 
doesn't say anything, it just continues to emit static. So we can leave this room and there's another kid enemy there. There's quite a few of them. I think the best way to take care of them is to let them run to you and then slash them once they get close. Because once they get close to you, they have to actually stop before slashing. So you've got a bit more time to hit them. Whereas if you just approach them when they're already stopped, then they're going to slash you straight away. The stairs are totally blocked. And if I go down here, this door here is locked. We need to get a key to go through that door, which leads to the basement. But first, let's go back and we'll go in the lift, the elevator, which is right here. This takes us to the fourth floor, as you can see. And there's another note there. Let's have a look. My secret note number four. This one was a good one. Very nice to kill. Easy to cut with my knife, like to cut food. Lovely. And there you go. We just got a text message on our phone in here. Obviously, it's the door with all the blood on it and below it. So let's go inside. And this is quite horrific here. Oh no. Did he do this to himself? Hmm? There's a key in the bathtub. Awesome. So we got the basement key. Reach the basement. So that's what we need to do now. So look at that, that's fucked. I can see from here he's dead. Did he do this to himself? Obviously looks like a suicide. There's some pills there, so he probably took them before he did it. Look at the blood. Look how much there is. It's everywhere. That is absolutely horrific. Okay, so we can now go outside. You can save the game there. Maybe I can climb down here. Yes, we need to do that because... Oh shit, that's right. I need to get my gun out. New enemy. Fuck. Jesus Christ. Yeah, as soon as you walk out on the balcony and you finish getting that cutscene, through this door will barge a new enemy. They're called Fasters. They make a terrifying wailing scream. And they are quite aggressive. You can take care of them with the knife, but I just like using the Glock for the most part. Now we can't go back because as you can see, somebody's blocked the door. So what we need to do is climb down this balcony. And to do that, we go in here and collect rope, as well as some Glock ammunition. Beautiful. So we can now use the rope here. Yep, enough rope to climb down the balcony and we can go down. Let's do it. Now be careful, there will be another one of those faster enemies in this room here. Fuck. They're very fast. Extremely fast. Hence the name Fasters, I guess. All locked. Some Glock ammunition there, awesome. There should be another faster out here. Yep, there she is. So they usually take about four shots with the Glock. Look at that, what's happened here? What the, they weren't here before. What the hell's going on? Obviously we can't go that way. So yeah, we're on level three and we need to make our way to the basement now since we have the basement key. There it is, the tag says basement. Oh shit. Oh 
God, I'm doing terrible here. I'm going to have to heal again. That's disgraceful. I'm just going to get the Glock out, stuff it. I've got plenty of clips. Oh, great. What a perfect time to reload. That was my own fault. See what I mean? You've got to weigh up the cost of whether it's beneficial to reload or not. You know, try and save your ammunition or just reload and get a new clip. Okay, so level 2, we need to go through here. Beautiful. Another one will be here. Taken care of. So we're doing a bit of backtracking now in order to make our way to the basement. Oh shit. Oh. They are very fast to attack. Probably use the same method to take care of them as you would fighting the kids. And what I mean by that is attack, dodge back, wait for them to come to you, then move forward, attack, then dodge back, rinse and repeat. That seems to be the best way of taking care of them. Okay. <laughs> it's funny, whenever you sprint and there's a bit of a staircase, you always fall over. I don't think it does any damage, but it just slows you down. Okay, so... There'll be a new variant of the slower here. Look at this guy. They're very fast, these types of slowers. Look at that thing. They've always got a hammer for a weapon. Now we've got a bit of a flood happening here. Look at all this water. Uh oh. Let's take care of this faster here. Stamina's depleting. Should be one more. Oh no. Another one. There we go. And we'll go through this door here. Take the staircase down. This will lead us to the basement. You can save the game there if you want. So we'll use the basement key on the door and go through. This part is pretty damn terrifying. There's going to be a new enemy as soon as we go out here. They're called the Drowned. Look at that thing. God. They're relatively harmless for the most part, but... Let me just kill it first. See how there's this little creature that comes out of its body? What the hell is that? Now, if you try and take care of one of these things with a gun, which has at least one bullet in the chamber, which I will do right here. It's quite dark, but there's another one right here. Watch what happens. Watch what they do. See? Quickly tap mouse one, otherwise they will make you commit suicide. Simon will slowly raise the gun to his head and if you don't mash the mouse one button like crazy he'll blow his brains out and it's an instant kill. They are very dangerous in that regard so I always take care of them using melee weapons. By using melee weapons the only threat they'll pose is that little creature that comes out of its stomach. Overall, this enemy is quite weak and moves extremely slow. There we go, took it down without taking a hit. Okay, we'll go through here. Pretty funky music. You know, this game has such great music. Every piece of music is fitting. From this sort of funky type music to downright depressing and tragic music. Okay, look at this. Look at what the hell's going on here. There's two nooses, there's some blood and a chair. It looks like someone was tortured here. 
or executed because of the nooses, I don't know. Anyway, we'll pick up this, the videotape. And now, we've got a new objective, find a video player. So we need to watch what's on this videotape. A blood-stained videotape. I need a video player to view it. We certainly do. And I believe that's on level 2 of the apartments, the video player. So we'll go there soon. Glock ammo there. And to get out, we'll go over here and unlock the door. Okay, so let's go to level 2 and watch that video. Make our way back. Is there anything in here? No. That's where the faster came out of, I believe, when she attacked us. Okay, so we've got to go to level 2, but first I'm just going to go to level 3 here and grab some ammo. There it is. And we can't go back to level 3 via that way since it's blocked off by those bars which just appeared there, who knows why. It's all very Silent Hill-esque, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because, I mean, like what are you seeing? Is it real? Is it not real? It's like the whole other world sequences of Silent Hill games. It's just fantastic. Okay, now be careful. That's where we need to view the video, but watch out because a faster will come barging through that door as soon as you go over to that video player. So be prepared. There she is. Christ, reload. Alright, good. So I've got eight clips with the Glock, which is pretty damn good. You can hold a maximum of ten clips. So I can probably start going crazy with the Glock now. Alright, let's go ahead and use the video on the video player and watch it. That was pretty damn brutal. Cuts his head off with some shears. Okay, 3759. So that's a code, and if you remember, at the top of the staircase on the fourth floor, the elevator there, there was a key panel next to it. We take that code and punch it in. As you can see, our objective, escape the apartments with the elevator. Let's do that. <laughs> and I've already forgotten the code. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you forget codes, just press tab to bring up your inventory and it will be in your notes section. So there you go, 3759. Let's go ahead and put in the code. And the elevator now comes up. We'll go in. Let's see where it takes us. God, look at this. What the hell's going on? What floor are we on? What happened to the apartments? Look at it. All the doors are blocked off by these bars. There's blood all over the walls and the floor. This music, the screams in the background. This game is amazing. God, I'm terrified now. And this is... Oh. It doesn't matter how many times you play this game, it's still scares the shit out of you. Unbelievable. So all we got to do is keep progressing down. Oh, okay. Now look at this. I'm going to equip my Glock. See how I've got the max of 10 clips. I can't pick up another one. But if you reload, this is what I like to do. So I've got a full clip of ammo. Bang. There you go. 
I'm locked and loaded to the brim. So let's keep going down. What is this? What's happening? <sighs> this game's killing me. So mainly you'll just find Glock ammo lying around. There you go. And I mean it's giving it to you for good reason because coming up is going to be our first boss fight. Now as you can see, there's a tape recorder here and it's situated in a very important location because up ahead, that's where the boss fight takes place. I'm not going to bother saving it just yet. I'm going to go ahead and take care of this boss. I'm going to be using the Glock against him. This is actually quite frightening, but here we go, let's do it. Look at this thing! Look at it! This is absolutely spine chilling! Now what you need to do is be extremely careful. He can one hit kill you. The problem is if you get close, see how he brings up the chainsaw and tries to slash you? That will kill you instantly, so you need to quickly dodge out of the way or just run to avoid it. So what we need to do is shoot him quite a few times. And when he falls down like that, what you need to do is go behind him and shoot this lump on his back. That will damage him. Rinse and repeat. That's all you do. Once you get the pattern down, this boss fight is not very hard at all. Okay. Doing good so far. Like I said, be very careful. He can one hit kill you with that chainsaw. It'll just slice you in half. Maybe one more time, get him to kneel down. And that will do it. Hopefully this should kill him outright. What the indeed? Who was he? Nobody? So there you go, chapter 2. Who is that doctor? Very good question. We will find out as we play throughout the game. But for now, I will save it and I will see you guys in the next video where we go through chapter 2. I'm out.